Good day. Welcome to another session of K Explain. Today we will talk about educational technology and technology in education. And at the end of this unit, we will be able to first differentiate educational technology and technology in education with the paradigm shift from the 20th century to the 21st century industrial revolution 4.0. Also, we will be talking about the digital divide in the Philippines and the internet addiction. Second, we will be able to trace the evolution of educational technology in relation with the changing curricular landscape in the Philippines and the world and industrial revolution 4.0. And lastly, we will identify the Gen Z learners and alpha generation's level of usage and confidence of using technology for projects or activities. Now, let's talk about educational technology. Educational technology or edtech's definition has evolved over the years as a variation of ways of dealing with learning processes, a conceptual framework, theory and practice, and the latest study and ethical practices of dealing with technological processes and resources. And educational technology is a combination of two terms, the education and technology. And education is about learning skills and knowledge. It also means helping people to learn how to do things and support them to think about what they learn. It's also important for educators to teach ways to find and use information. But this is more than teaching of skills and knowledge because in education, we care for the teaching of values, the improvement of personality, building of confidence and training them to respect the others. And now, education is the process of facilitating learning or the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, and beliefs. On the other hand, the most simplest definition of technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. Therefore, educational technology is the application of scientific knowledge about learning and the conditions of learning to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of teaching and learning. And educational technology refers to how the people use their inventions and discovery to satisfy their educational needs and desires. According to James Finn, it also refers to the application of physical sciences and engineering technology to provide mechanical instrument or hardware which can be used for instructional purposes. Examples are the steel and motion pictures, tape records, televisions, teaching machines, and of course the computer-based teaching. On the comprehensive aspects, educational technology or ET implies planning, the implementing and evaluating a system in education according to scientific principles so as to achieve the educational objectives at the maximum level. The growing use of educational technology helps to release the teacher from the routine role of information giving so that they can devote their time and effort to the more important task of planning, arranging, and evaluating learning experiences and outcomes. These are some of the benefits of educational technology. Technology can make education more effective because with the use of technology, instructions can have more scientific base. It makes also instructions more powerful. This is because with uh, the use of available resources and technologies that makes instructions so powerful. And lastly, the technology provides immediate and equal access to information. Now, let's talk about technology in education. Technology in education is the study of technology in which students learn about the processes and knowledge related to technology. As a field of study, it covers the human ability to shape and change the physical world to meet the needs by manipulating materials and tools with techniques. But how important is the use of technology in education? We have been using technology so much in these days, in each of every domain of our lives, be it in education or the regular household work, that have we ever taken out a second to wonder if it's having a positive impact on our work, or it's just that we have been relying too much on it, that we've become habitual to it, and ignoring, of course, the direction of its impact. Say, for instance, it's technology causing education to improve over time or we've just been catching up with the trend of educational technology. Earlier, 
Technology and education was a debatable topic among society. Everyone had their own views on modernizing education and make it technology aided. There were a huge number of positive and negatives to education technology, but gradually, as technology was embraced by educational institutes, they realized the importance of technology in education. Its positive outnumbered the negatives, and now, with technology, education has taken a whole new meaning that it leaves us with no doubt that our educational system has been transformed owing to the ever-advancing technology. And technology and education are a great combination if it is used together with the right vision and in the right reason. With technology, educators, students, and parents have a variety of learning tools at their fingertips. Here are some of the ways in which technology improves education over time. Number one, teachers can collaborate to share the ideas and resources online. They can communicate with others across the world in an instant, meet the shortcomings of their work, refine it, and provide their students with the best. This approach definitely enhances the practice of teaching. Number two, students can develop valuable research skills at a young age. Technology gives students immediate access to an abundance of quality information which leads to learning at much quicker rates than before. Third, students and teachers have access to an expansive material. There are plenty of resourceful, credible websites available on the internet that both teachers and students can utilize. The internet also provides a variety of knowledge and doesn't limit students to one person's opinion. Four, online learning is now an equally credible option. Face-to-face -face interaction is huge, especially in the younger years. But some students work better when they can go at their own pace. Online education is now accredited and has changed the way we view education. Next is the digital divide. Digital divide is a term generally referred in the education sector to showcase inequalities in physical access to technology as well as the imbalances in resources and skills needed to effectively participate as a digital citizen. Also, digital divide or the digital split is a term that refers to the gap between demographics and regions that have access to modern information and communications technology and those that don't or have restricted access. These technologies are the smartphones, the televisions, the personal computers, and the internet. Despite the developments made in technology, the students are still not getting the benefits of it. They are not receiving the education that can help them survive in today's tech world. Other factors fueling this gap are poverty and infrastructure. Also, the corruption and bureaucracy, as well as in education and technical support. Therefore, it's imperative for educators to be aware of the potential barriers to technology and internet access that students may face. But of course, we need to bridge this gap. And in order to bridge this gap, there must be a curriculum innovation that enhances the delivery of instruction to be enforced by most schools. We, the teachers in the College of Education, we're looking for alternatives to meet the challenges in providing all of you, our students, with adequate knowledge and skills in the use of educational technology and the integration of ICT in education. The rapid rise of technology, our overdependence on it, and what it could mean for the future of humanity. And that is the Gen Z and the Alpha generations. Talking about the generational differences, these are the generation of learners. Baby boomers. Baby boomers were thought in a linear fashion. They read books. Not only that, they read books from cover to cover. They were taught by lecture. Prevalent learning technologies included overhead projectors, film strips, and some video. Does anyone remember mimeograph handouts? How about that smell? <coughs> Next is the Gen X. Gen X were taught in pods or modules. When they did research, they used the index in books to find the information they needed. They didn't read books cover to cover. They learned an instructured environment that included some lectures and small group activities. Millennials. Millennials were taught in a more constructive environment. They did research in a network structure. When asked to investigate a topic, they would most likely turn to a computer. 
They wondered why anyone would consider reading a book. They were the first entire generation of digital natives. Their learning environment accommodated flexibility. Now, aside from these four generations, we have so-called the Gen Z and the Generation Alpha. Millennials were different and required some modifications so higher end has been adapting to their needs. Millennials were the first generation to come to campus and they have laptops in hand. And the Gen X may have used desktops in computer labs on campus. And these millennials force educators to begin using technology as a teaching tool. The Gen Z or the Generation Z were born with technology. They will never know what life was like without the internet. And these Gen Z students or learners don't see technology as a tool. They see it as a regular part of life. While millennials use three screens on average, the Gen Z students frequently use up to five. Most use a smartphone, the television, a laptop, desktop, and a tablet. These devices occupy 10 hours of Gen Z's daily activity. The constant stimulation and access to all the world's information at their fingertips has given them an 8-second attention span and has trained their brains to expect instant gratification. Sitting in a hall or classroom listening to a lecture is a Gen Z torture. Gen Z students want a chance to be part of the learning process, not a passive bystander. On the other hand, Generation Alpha is also called the I generation. It is the most influential generation of the 21st century, and here's why. The Generation Alpha are children born from 2010 to 2025. They are the first generation entirely born within the 21st century. They are also known as the I generation. They are the children of the millennials. Generation Alpha uses smartphones and tablets naturally. These children were born along with iPhones, iPods, and applications. They don't know or can imagine how life was without them. They are not afraid of technology or touching buttons to learn what those buttons do. Alphas learn by doing. The right way to teach the young Alphas is by developing their critical thinking skills. It will be important for Generation Alpha children to be able to see the problems from different perspectives. This is the generation that will co-live with advanced artificial intelligence, and this Generation Alphas need to be creative. But what are the challenges that teachers are facing today? This is the use of technology and the integration of educational technology and instruction. As teachers or as future teachers, we need to meet the needs of these learners by equipping themselves on how ICT can be integrated effectively in their areas of specialization. But the questions are, are we ready to face the challenges? Are we adaptive to change? Are we willing to learn for the sake of our future generations of learners? Are we prepared to embrace the role of this double profession? Assess yourself. The answer must be yes. We need to be ready to face these challenges and we need to be adaptive to change. We need also to learn for the sake of our future generations. And of course, we need to be prepared to embrace the role of this profession. Again, class, just keep calm and embrace the technology. Again, Thank you for watching. I am Dr. Kenneth Samonte and see you next time for another exciting session of K-Explain. Have a great day everyone.